today. Good. I didn't hear you, Yadira. Good. Alicia, how are you today? Okay. As a part of our lesson today, we will be doing an icebreaker. Have you heard of the term tongue twister? I'm going to write it on the board here. Tongue twister. Who have heard of this phrase before? Kyle, Evelyn, Stephen. What do you know about a tongue twister? And what is a tongue twister? It's very confusing. Okay, let me put that there. It's saying it's very confusing. Krista, have you heard about tongue twisters before? Krista, what can you share with me in regards to tongue twisters? Come on. Give it a try, Krista. What, like, like, when you start, like, Saying like when you're you saying the words. And... Okay, so you're we spoken words, and you are you have also indicated that it's somewhat confusing. Okay, thank you, Krista. Kyle, you had your hand up. When you use a letter repetitively to confuse. Very good, Kyle. A letter used in words repeatedly. Let me hear from. Edwin to the back. It uses um, a lot of alliteration, like um, what Kyle said. He uses words that repeat alliteration. Very good, alliteration. Okay, so tongue twisters are, or we would say, they are sentences or phrase or rhymes that represent difficulties when spoken. And you would usually find that certain words are repetitive and they begin with the same consonant letter as well. Now on the board we have two tongue twisters and I want you to challenge yourself today. The first one I'm going to read for you and then I invite you to challenge yourself. It says, she sells seashells on the seashore. The shells she sells are seashells, I'm sure. So if she sells seashells on the seashore, then I'm sure she sells seashore shells. Now, the fun and humor in um, saying tongue twisters is how fast you can repeat it. So the faster you're able to recite the tongue twister, that is your strength. Okay? Let us try and say it as fast as we can together. Everybody. She sells seashells on the seashore. The shells she sells are seashells, I'm sure. So if she sells seashells on the seashore, then I'm sure she sells seashore shells. Do we have a volunteer, that be, a person that believes they can say it, say it even faster than us? Let us give Kyle a chance. Come on, Kyle. Quickly. She sells seashells on the seashore. She sells seashells, I'm sure. So if she sells seashells on the seashore, then I'm sure she sells seashore shells. Thank you very much, Kyle. A female, a girl for the second tongue twister. Come on, girl, let's challenge Kyle. Yadira. Quickly, Yadira. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, a peck of pickled peppers. Peter Piper picked a Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, where the peck of pickled peppers, Peter Piper. Very good. Let's clap for her. That's an excellent job, Yadira and Kyle. Okay, so you see how fast they can be recited. Okay, that ends it our icebreaker. Now there is a particular slide here and I want you to look at this slide very carefully. What is the picture depicting? You want to sh Leticia, what is this image showing us? The seashore. Leticia, seashore. What else can we take from this picture? What else is this picture depicting? Look at it very carefully. Yes, it's something in regards to the seashore, what source of water is directly in front of the seashore? Edwin? Sea water. Sea water. Think about this question here. What impact can an increase in sea level rise have on that seashore? What impact can an increase in sea level rise have on that seashore? Or we can say, we can call it a beachfront. Think about that question. 
What impact can a sea level rise can sea level rise have on the seashore? Yadira. Soil erosion. Soil erosion, very good. Soil erosion. What else can be an impact on that um, seashore there? What is another impact of sea level rise on the seashore besides soil erosion? Sorry. If there is a if there is soil erosion, what will be the result of losing all that soil? Edwin? Coastal drawback. Coastal drawback. Or a loss of settlement. Thank you, Edwin. If the soil continues to erode and there is a loss of settlement, where will these people live? What measures will they have to take in place to adapt? If soil erosion continues, think about Monkey River. We have been hearing a lot about soil erosion occurring down there. What do those people in Monkey River have to do in order to adapt? If the water continues to come closer and closer on the land, what do they have to do? Come on, class. Alexander? They move more inland. They move more inland. Thank you. They have to relocate. Also, students, when soil erosion starts to occur, there is a loss of fertility in the soil, resulting in soil degradation. Okay, students, in today's lesson, I would say at the end of the lesson, we should be able, all of us will be able to demonstrate the erosion process. We will identify evidence of erosion by looking at a variety of pictures. We will conduct fact-based observations. We will hypothesize the causes of erosion. And we will also, in pairs, plan a proposed solution to a specific erosion problem. What is erosion, students? And I'm going to be distributing our KWL chart. I want you to think, what is erosion? And in the first column, you're going to write what comes to your mind. Any word or phrase or sentence that relates to what is erosion, and then we're going to be sharing. Kyle, can you kindly pass some along for me? Thank you. Quickly. Think about the question, what is erosion? And you will write your thoughts in the first column. Okay, put your pens down. Let me hear from Daisy. What did you write on your paper? What do you know about erosion? Daisy. Daisy, I'm going to come back to you. Let me call on Anna. Erosion is the washing away of topsoil. Very good, Anna. Let me hear from Edwin. What is erosion? Erosion is lack of fruits in the soil causing, when it rains, the soil to wash away easily. So rain washing away soil. Stephen? Something being washed away. Something being washed away. Thank you very much. Now a key word here that you mentioned, students, wash away and soils. So erosion can be described as the process by which soil and rocks are removed from the earth's surface by natural processes such as wind and water flow. Now on your KW chart there, I would want you to write on the, the W section one thing that you would want to learn about erosion today. Write your question there. One thing that you would want to learn about erosion. Leticia, what would you want to learn about erosion today? Um, how does it start? 
how does it start? And that's a very valid question, Leticia. How it occurs? And thank you. Evelyn? Effects of erosion on the economic of the country. Effects of erosion and how it impacts our economic situation. Thank you. And I could get one more. Edwin? How fast um, the different types of soil erode? Can you kindly repeat, Edwin? How fast soils erode? How fast does erosion occur? Thank you, Edwin. Now, let me just repeat them for you. In this lesson, we will be finding out about all three of these questions. How fast erosion occurs, the effects of erosion, and the impact it has on the economics or the economy of our country, and how fast does soils erode. We will be finding out, finding out about more information pertaining to these questions. Kindly put your KWL chart to the side. Thank you. The poem. Okay, let us read this poem together, class. And it's entitled Erosion by Samantha Pratt Tyler. Let us read it, students. Erosion by Samantha Pratt Tyler. The houses sit upon the bluff, beautiful views of the lake, as the waves continue to crash, slowly taking the sand and soil out into the lake. The house is now on unsteady ground, slowly giving ground to the lake as nature by erosion takes over the land. Now, erosion is a natural process. We do not control it. It happens naturally in the environment, but we can put precautions in place. What is this poem here saying exactly about erosion? Look at the words, think about the words waves and continue to crush. How does erosion impact the seashore there? Or our shoreline? How does erosion affect our shorelines? Or our settlements? Especially people that live along the coast. It's right there in the poem. Beautiful views of the lake as the waves come in and continue to crash. What eventually will the waves do to people's homes? Kyle? They destroy their homes. Very good, Kyle. The impact of waves is so powerful and strong that eventually people's homes will be destroyed and they will have to move. And from our icebreaker and that activity, we found out that erosion is the process by which soil and rock are removed from the Earth's surface by natural processes such as wind or water, and we will call that fluvial, F-L-U-V-I-A-L. And whatever soil is removed, they are transported and deposited into other locations. So basically, erosion is the transport or movement of soil and particles from one area to another where those particles are deposited. On the table, students, I have some papers, and these will be represented minute or small particles. I will take some boxes from here as well. What would happen if the blow dryer is turned on and placed very close to these items? Let us predict. What would happen if I turn on the hair blower? and place it very close or directly in front of these small items. Stephen? Some of them will be blown away. Some of them will be blown away, very good. Okay, let us see what will happen. Okay, thank you. It says, can you identify any problems that may occur? When I turn on this blower, what occurred in the classroom just now? What happened? to these items that were placed very close together. What happened to the item students? They were blown away. Very good. 
So put the items were blown away. Can you, sorry, are there any processes in nature that produce similar results or problems? Remember I said, let's imagine that these papers here were representing small particles of rocks and soils. And this hair blower, what kind of heat did it produce? Well, thermal heat, but what else did it produce? When I put on, when I turn on the blower, what else did it produce besides heat? I didn't hear you. Edwin? Come on, what do you feel right there? What is, what is it producing right here? Air, what kind of air? Hot air, it's a word that begins with W. Very good, Edwin. So, I was showing you the process of erosion because we have different types of erosion. And this one demonstration here was representing wind erosion. Here we, was, we were getting the wind and the stones. And whenever you have a strong breeze or a strong force, and remember these are natural processes, the wind, as if there are small little rocks or particles, can move that rock and blow it and blow it and move it until it reaches in another destination. Okay. So we learned about wind erosion just now by that demonstration. All right. I'm going to be pouring a large amount of soil in a container. Before I put the dirt into the tray, the lasagna tray, I will be passing this bag around for you to touch the soil and we will be speaking about components of soil before we do the actual demonstration. Quickly pass it, Steven. Put your hand into the bag, touch the soil, break up the particles quickly. Quickly touch it. Feel it. Put your hands into the bag. Come on, Evelyn. Okay. Think about the different components that soil is made up from. Okay. Come on, Yadira, Rosalina. Put your hand into the bag. Thank you. Somebody said the soil feels soft. Now, after you have touched the soil, students, what do you think are the, the makeup? What do you think soil is made from? What do you think is the composition of soil? What are the different things soil is made from? Edwin? Small particles, Small particles of? Animals or dirt particles. Small particles of dirt. I'm hearing another person. Was it you, Alexander? Go ahead, please. Well, smart particles of the kid. Um, small particles of the kid. The kid matter. The kid matter. Very good. Steven, in your opinion, what do you think is the composition of soil? What makes up soil? Mm, same thing, the kid particles. The kid particles. Okay. From the research card, we're saying something? Humus. And what is humus? Decayed particles, remnants of plants and animals that have died and have decayed. Very good. So we would say that soils are a mixture of different things, such as rocks, minerals. Let me put it here. Rocks, minerals, dead and decaying plants and animals. Okay, thank you very much. Now I will be putting the soil into the lasagna tree. Can I have a volunteer? What would happen? Listen to this question. What would happen if I get a dropper and I put the soil in this tree and I just drip one drop at a time? What will happen to the soil? Eventually the drops of water will um, form a higher water content in the soil and it will get very liquidish and Go muddy ahead, and it will wash away easily. Very good. Eventually it will force the soil to move. Now we're going to pour, come Alexander, come you hold it here. Come around. 
and pour the soil in here and we are going to create a layer Here we have a layer of soil. And in this bottle, I have water. Now, if I take my time and gradually pour the water, like what we said just now, it will take time. This is called splash erosion. It will take time. But if I pour a large amount of water, it will create a more powerful force and it will have a more greater impact do you see that students Krista, can you see the demonstration if i pour all the water do you see the, the soil moving forward okay thank you very much can i put this in the corner alexander thank you very much now soils consist mostly of sand lime and clay with certain saline and organic substances in smaller and varying proportions. Soils consist of two parts of organic part which can readily be burned away when the surface soil is heated to redness and of an in inorganic part which remains fixed in the fire consisting of earthy and saline substances from which if carbonic acid or any unless elastic gas be released demonstration and we found that when we poured a large amount of water into the soil it created an erosion now how do we recognize signs of erosion in our environment when we walk around where we live how do we recognize signs of erosion we know erosion is the washing away of soil particles or of the land so how do we recognize that in our environment? Think about where you live, where you go to school. I think potholes. Potholes, very good, Stephen. It's washing away of the road. Very good, Stephen. So we see potholes. Come on, think about different evidence of erosion in your environment. Kyle? Large, large chunks of missing soil. Large chunks of missing, missing soil. Very good. Imagine that we are, sorry, Edwin. Some large rocks will have a smoother surface. I did not hear the beginning part some of your response. Some large rocks or boulders will have a smoother surface because yes, of water. Yes, very good. And we call it defoliation. After exposure to different elements of the weather, the rocks will be broken down eventually until they become into smaller particles. Imagine we were en route to Cairo right now on a bus. Think about the hillside. What have we noticed when we are going to Cairo? How many of you have been to Cairo before? The beautiful district of Cairo. Put your hands down. Okay, think about the different hillsides. What have, what have we noticed when we are traveling in the different vehicles? Think about the trees that you see on the hillsides. Where do we get gravel and rocks to build? In some of the mounds or some mountains, you can find some, some sites that look like they have been excavated. Excavated. Very good, Edwin. That is the word. When we go along the different highways, we see areas where there, there has been dredging, where people have gone in with machines, and they will dig out a particular area to get that material to build something from. They're taking the heavy machines for building purposes and it eventually results in erosion of the hillside. Let's look at this picture here, students. It says, what problem is the picture demonstrating? Leticia? Let's look at that. Look at the picture there. What impact has the sea or the ocean created there on the edge of that particular part of land? It destroyed it. Well, it actually destroyed it. The waves, the chemicals, this, the salt in the water eventually led to erosion. Look at the hillside here that we were speaking about just a while ago. What variables do you believe resulted in the de of the hill? 
and how has erosion affected the topography? When we speak about the topography, we are referring to the shape of the land or the geographic area. How has erosion affected that particular hillside? Edwin? It seems as if it was a landslide on that particular Yes, area. there's a big part of that land that has been removed. And if we have heavy torrential rains, the force of the rain can cause or create more pebbles and smaller stones to fall down and create mudslides, impacting lives of humans. Look at this tree here. It's adjacent to the seashore. And with the continuous sea level rise and the increase of wave strength, the soil has been carried out to sea, which has resulted in sedimentation. And it also affects marine species as well. Eventually and gradually, all the soil that is surrounding this particular tree will be removed. Now, causes of erosion. It says while erosion is a natural process, human activities have dramatically increased by 10 to 40 times the rate at which erosion is occurring globally. Excessive erosion causes problems such as desertification, where our land becomes so barren that plants and animals will not flourish. They will not be able to survive. There will be decreases in agricultural productivity due to land degradation. Whenever soil erosion occurs, the fertility of the soil has been decreased, and therefore we will not be able to utilize that soil to plant or cultivate, cultivate any particular crop. There will be an increase in sedimentation of waterways, an ecological collapse due to a loss of nutrient-rich upper soil layers. Water and wind erosion are now the two primary causes of land degradation. Combined, they are responsible for 84% of degraded acreage, we are speaking about land, and making excessive erosion one of the most significant global environmental problems we face today. So soil erosion is a very big issue, and we are already facing the impact of soil erosion, especially in some of our coastal villages. Human activities that increase erosion rates. What are some human activities that you believe can contribute to erosion? What are some of the things that we do as man that will result in increased erosion? Think about the question carefully. Human activities that increase erosion rates. Stephen? Very good. The cutting down of trees. Go ahead, Stephen. Cutting down of trees. Very good, Stephen. That's an excellent answer. The cutting down of trees will result in deforestation. Very good. How else have we contributed to soil erosion? What different human activities do we do that result in soil erosion besides cutting down of trees? Go ahead, Edwin. Mining and excavations. Very good, Edwin. Mining and excava excavation. Another student. Come on, Anna. Not familiar with this part. Okay. Krista, can you help her? One human activity that we do that could result in increased soil erosion. It has here... Unsustainable agricultural practices are the single greatest contributor to soil erosion rates. The tillage of agricultural lands. Students, I have distributed the worksheet on the different types of erosion. In the first space here, we have splash erosion followed by wind and fluval erosion. Use, using your imagination and your interpretation, write briefly what is the difference between the three kinds of erosion and draw a picture to represent same. Now, in our lesson, we did two demonstrations, so this part should not be so difficult for you. 
We did a demonstration involving water and wind erosion. Give you a brief description of what splash erosion is. Remember when I used the word the dropper or the pipette? Splash. Let me see what you wrote, Irma. Activity students. Remember, a few of you will be expected to share your explanation and drawing as well. Is there anyone that would want to know what splash erosion is? Anna? What did you write about splash erosion? Well, splash erosion, droplets of water falling on the soil, washes it away little by little. Very good. Can you kindly of repeat that, Anna, so that everyone can hear? Splash erosion, droplets of water falling on the soil, washes it little by little. Washes it, uh, washes it away gradually. Very good, Anna. The other one, wind erosion. Edwin? Loose soil, particles which are moved by heavy wind. Heavy wind, very good. And water erosion, Kyle? A large amount of water hits the soil, causing it to erode very quickly. And to be transported from one area and deposited in another geographic area. Very good. Now we have one more activity to do. And this one will be a bit more challenging for us. We have learned about the different types of erosion. Now we have to think about mitigation measures. How can we reduce the impact of soil erosion? What can we do to reduce the impact of soil erosion? So I'm going to put here preventative measures. Preventative measures in reducing soil erosion. Stephen? Very good, Stephen. The first one, planting of more trees. Very good there, Stephen. How can we keep our soil and our land intact? What are the different steps that we have to do? The first one, planting of more trees. Daisy would want to share any response in regards to this question here. Edwin, what, what other step can we put in place in order to prevent soil erosion? Using a, environmentally safe pesticides which don't um, um, kill the animals that we don't want to kill. Very much. good, Edwin. Using environmentally safe chemicals on our crop. The chemicals, what they do, they actually kill the nutrients and earthworms that lives amongst the humus or the top soil, reducing soil fertility. So if we use environmentally safe chemicals, this will prevent soil erosion. Come on, another person. Yes, Rolisha, and thanks for raising your hand. Less constru construction of building. Very good. Less construction, I would say, on our hillsides and ex excavation. Excavate students and we have to build. We will contribute to deforestation because we have to cut down a lot of trees. Is there any other person that would like to share a preventative measure in regards to reducing soil erosion? Come on, think about it. At least one more. Edwin. Plant different types of um, crops rather than just planting only one kind. Very good. Planting of different kinds of crops. That can help as well. So, variety of crops. And these are excellent answers, students. Thanks very much. 
I, all, I, from my research, I have found that we can also build seawalls. And when we build seawall students, this will help to break her, reduce the impact of waves that are coming in onto the shore. We can also create wind breaks. It has, which are barriers, rows planted along the windward part of a particular part of land. And we can use contour forming as well. I think we have covered a variety of different preventative measures here by planting of more trees, utilizing environmentally safe chemicals to prevent soil erosion and loss of soil fertility, less construction and excavation on the mountainside, hillsides, plant a variety of crops as well, the building of seawalls and implementation of contour farming. Now, in the beginning of the lesson, you were given a KWL chart. Now, I encourage you to take out that, that chart again, students. And in the L section, write one thing that you learned about soil erosion, the preventative measures, the causes, and the effects. One fact that you learned today in this lesson. Are we finished, students? Daisy, are finished? Yadira? Almost? You see the last two girls here. Okay. Here we will start our sharing. Let me call Edwin to the back there. Edwin, can you kindly share what you wrote, please? I learned that dust particles can cause the sky the sky's color to go from blue to white. Very good, Edwin. Anna, can you kindly share with us what you wrote? Um, there are three types of erosion. Splash, wind, running water. Splash, wind, and? Water erosion. Very through, good. Yeah. Well, splash and wind, splash and water, it will boil, boil down to the same thing, but splash is gradually. Water comes with a more stronger force. Yadira, can you kindly share with us what you wrote? That the wind erodes the soil and the particles may reach up and can turn the color of the sky from blue to white. Very good. Krista? That erosion is a natural effect and we cannot control it. Very good. Soil erosion is a natural phenomenon that we cannot control. Rolisa? Rolis? It mainly happens naturally, but it can still be caused by, by humans. Very good. It is a natural, I would say a natural phenomenon, but human activities can result in soil erosion as well. Thank you very much, Release. Kyle? I learned that salt water can break down large, large pieces of soil and roads. And, and it can contribute to defoliation of that particular material. Alexander, and thank you very much, Kyle. I learned that soil erosion is globally, and farming is a distributor of soil erosion. Very good. Soil erosion is affecting the entire world. It's a global issue, and it's occurring on a much more faster pace. Thank you very much, students.